Hey there YouTube, Flight Guy 1997 here today, and I'm going to be giving you a quick tutorial on RNAV. What the f Chances are, like me, you have seen the mumbo jumbo lingo of RNAV terms thrown around, but you don't know what it all means. Fear not, this video will help alleviate some of that ambiguity and make you a better and more knowledgeable pilot. RNAV, also known as Area Navigation, was created as a result of cost-saving measures by airlines. A simple reference back to our geometry lessons tells us that the shortest distance between any two points is a direct line. So when the ancient VOR to VOR routes were adding unnecessary costs to airlines, RNAV was born. RNAV, in its simplest form, can be displayed as a waypoint that is located at a fixed distance or DME and a specified radial from a VOR station. More recently, we have brought on GPS waypoints and that's where the fun really starts. Within area navigation, there is a subset of performance-based navigation also known as RNP. These routes require a specific navigational performance, and as more and more aircraft are equipped with RNP capabilities, these routes are becoming increasingly popular. This newly found accuracy and precision data is exactly what has enabled the use of RNAV approaches. Let's go over to the simulator and take a look at some of these. Hello you guys and welcome to the simulator. I'm currently setting up for the RNAV approach runway 34 into Redding, California. Uh, I'm currently sequencing to uh, get to the approach fix of the Red Bluff VOR. So I'll be back here in a minute and we will go through the approach briefing. Okay you guys, so I'm going to take you through a quick explanation of the approach plate for the RNAV GPS approach runway 34 into Redding, California. Now if you look at the uh, top bar here, you can see typically, like in a typical ILS approach, you have an approach course, uh, which in this case is a heading of 342 degrees. You have your runway length, uh, your airport elevation, all that good stuff. Uh, if you would like to, you can read through the narrative, which is just below, but for the sake of time, I will leave that out. Uh, you can also see the instructions for the missed approach. It's a climb to 5,000 feet direct to the uh, Oscar Victor uh, India Charlie Uniform intersection and a right turn to a 093 track uh, and then you're going to hold at 5,000 feet. You can see that we initially are flying over the Red Bluff VR on our instrument approach fix or IAF. From there we have direct uh, Ukdao, I think that's how you pronounce it, Uniform Kilo Delta Oscar Whiskey. From there we join uh, the final approach course to Lassen, which is our final approach fix, our FAF. And from there, we will activate vectors to final on the G1000 and fly straight down to the runway using the glide path on the LPV approach. If we look at the minimums for this approach, we're flying the LPV, which gives us a minimums of 790 feet barometric or 300 feet AGL. Uh, you'll see here on the uh, Cessna Mustang, how that is implemented throughout the uh, approach. All right, so we're coming up here on the glide path. I've activated the uh, approach on the uh, MCP, and that will activate the glide path and the localizer performance on the RNAV approach. I've also activated uh, vectors to final, and you can see that I've done that by this long pink line that just extends throughout the entire um, center line of the runway. So you can see here that the glide path is coming up, and it's here going to start intercepting. And there's the interception right there. I'll include a screenshot um, over the top of this video. You guys can see that. So as we start heading down, we're gonna watch our speed, keep it around 130 to 150. And we're coming over the final approach fix now, which means our change is gonna be minimal. And we're gonna try to keep our descent rate above a thousand feet per minute.
as you can see guys I have uh, put in 5,000 feet just in case we need to go around that is the published missed approach altitude for the RNAV approach but I don't think we'll need to for this approach We're now roughly 1,500 feet above the ground, and you can see that the RNAV uh, localizer with the RNAV glide path have been activated and are being currently tracked. We're now 1,000 feet above the runway, slowing down to our approach speed of 101 knots. There's flaps full. We're going to continue the slowdown and turn off the autopilot. Okay, so we're now on our manual controls here. We are coming down towards the runway and we're just going to keep tracking our localizer and our glide path and keep that speed around 101 knots until we're just over the numbers. We're 500 feet above the runway, coming up on the minimums, and it's going to let us know. Minimums. Okay, minimums look good. Our altitude looks good, speed looks good. We're going to continue the approach. As we come over the numbers, we're going to pull the throttle right on out, all the way down, and let the aircraft come down onto the runway. Okay, there's touchdown. We're going to uh, reduce the speed all the way down to idle, extend the speed brakes, and apply some manual braking. Okay, simple as that, you guys. Welcome to Reading. I'm going to switch over to the external view and we can get some. Okay guys, so that was an RNAV approach, very very simple to fly, it doesn't take a lot of experience or know-how. If you have a FMS or a G1000, this works great, I'm fairly certain that this would also work just as well if you use one of the smaller GPSs like the one you can find on the A2A Cessna 172, which is the uh, GNS, or it's one of the smaller uh, Garmin models. If you have any questions about how this works, please feel free to leave comments down below. I'm going to switch over to back to the computer and we're going to wrap this on up. This concept of using GPS waypoints has been applied to terminal procedures for departing and arriving aircraft. One way specific departure procedures guide an aircraft to their departure gate or fix quickly and efficiently. On the reverse end of the flight, however, RNAV stars can also be used to guide an aircraft right on to a final approach course with one of our newly found RNAV approaches. So what are the benefits of this crazy and seemingly complicated system? Well, first off, the cost of maintaining GPS services and fixes are far cheaper than costly ILS systems or VOR stations. The use of RNP allows for safer and more reliable separation of aircraft and allows for the most efficient use of airspace. The use of RNAV approaches also can give a more comfortable glide path when compared to that of a traditional ILS approach. That's all for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it immensely. Looking for some great further content on this topic of RNAV? I have attached several links and videos that can help supplement the lesson here today. Want to stay up to date on my channel? Be sure to hit that subscribe button and find me on Facebook. Until next week, happy landings.